Hello and welcome. Um, I don't really have a deck today. I'm, my name is Kim Nelson. I'm standing in for Steven Sporen, who was actually really scheduled to do the session. He unfortunately came down ill and couldn't make the trip. Um, today I'm here to talk about a mobile timesheet app that we've delivered, as well as the new expense experience in finance and operations. So I'll go ahead and start with uh, mobile timesheet. Um, mobile timesheet we delivered as of actually back in 10.0 release is when it was initially released. A lot of people didn't even realize it. Uh, but it's built on Xamarin and it allows you to, to actually create, edit, um, submit, and approve timesheets in a mobile um, application. So I'm going to switch over to the mobile app after I log into it. So we have a new mobile app that's different than the mobile platform um, release. This one is called Dynamics 365 for Project Timesheet in your either Android or um, iPhone or Apple Store that you can download. Um, here I can go ahead and create a new timesheet. So I'm going to just uh, go ahead and pick a day um, and say create. Of course, I wasn't signed in. Sure, sure. I'm going to, I have to type in my password. You can't watch me. <laughs> um, so that's what happens when you um, run from one session to the next. Microsoft.com. Um, the other thing that we've done with this application is we've actually provided um, five fields that are hidden inside the app that can be customized um, so that uh, if you have custom fields, because Xamarin itself isn't um, extensible, but you can extend it for up to five different fields um, as a solution. And okay, that should work. That should work. There we go. I think we're connecting now, but it looks very similar. Let's see. I hope it's going to connect. <laughs> All right. I'm in. Okay. So I'll go back to my uh, new timesheet that I was going to create. Um, it's pretty simple. Just create a timesheet. Um, in our existing app, all you could do was enter time, but this is the new solution. Um, and then I just start entering um, add time at the bottom, and I can enter what project I'm working on. I can change the company for the project as well, so I can do intercompany time in the mobile. The recent will show what are the recent projects I've logged time on. If I'm assigned any in fin finance and operations, it'll show there, or I can see all my projects. So I can go ahead and pick a project and um, enter what activity I'm doing. Um, the category can default. You can set up so that the line property also can default. And I'll show you some of those parameters. Then at the bottom are the, the where I can enter the time. So I can just start entering time and saving it. Um, pretty simple. Um, I can enter comments right in here too. So we have the internal comments. And we have, you know, external comments. External comments um, will print on the customer invoice, and the internal comments are typically for your approver. So we'll go ahead and save that and save that. And then what this app does at the bottom, if you see that little note icon, that's an indicator that there are comments on that time. So I'll go ahead and save this. And then you'll start seeing some totals um, light up at the top. You'll see how many hours I've entered for the timesheet will show up at the top, as well as for each day. I have different um, views. I can view by date or I can view by project. If I get my finger in there. Um, view by project, so if I had time entered for multiple projects, it would uh, summarize by project. Um, and I can choose to show the comments, and I can see the comments right there in the app. And then I, it's as simple as uh, clicking submit, 
And if I switch back over to the machine and refresh my screen here, you'll see that a new timesheet came in. This is the timesheet and it's, uh, it's in draft. Um, oh, I forgot to hit submit. <laughs> it should be in review at some point. Um, and it'll be the exact same uh, time that we entered, um, the 5, 2, 3. And if I click on the Wednesday, you'll see my comments uh, display here. So it's, it's pretty quick and, and in there. So it allows people to manage. If I was a reviewer, I could approve these as well. So if I go into the project management and accounting parameters, I just wanted to call out uh, some parameters there. Um, we do have some options as to which fields can be would display in the mobile app. So if you don't want to, if you don't care about taxes, you could hide those. If you uh, don't need comments, you can hide those as well. Um, also, there's this enable Dynamics 365 project timesheet. Um, so you would need to turn this on for people to use that. And the reason for that is we have a time entry mobile app in the mobile client as well. So if that's what you're using and then all, all of a sudden somebody started entering time a different way, it could be a little confusing. So it's up to the business to say which mobile timesheet app they can use. And this would just enable that. So we'll move on to expense. We just got to rush right through here, these 20 minutes things. How many of you came to my session this morning at 9.30? Nobody? You did. Okay, so it's repeat for you, but the rest of you, it's all good. All goodness. Um, any questions on the timesheet? Okay. I can hear you. <laughs> the approval? Um, the approval, is like if I was uh, the approver, let me go back in. Although I'm set up to, to do this, but there's an option to show timesheets to review. So if I was an approver, I'd have lists here and then I get the same experience and I can view the timesheet and approve them here. So, yeah. Yep. Did FNO, does it have an offline mode? No, Xamarin. I don't believe supports offline yet. Um, I could be wrong though. You can you can send me that email as a as a, in an email. My alias is K Nelson K N E L S O N. So I I will get the right answer to you on that. Is there a power app? This is not a power app. This is built on Xamarin. This is built using Xamarin. But we do have a goal to uh, get um, all of this stuff up into one app and all up on CDS, which then eventually we could have a power app as well, or you could build your own power app. So we'll move over to expense. Um, I want to just start in the feature management um, area first, in case um, you're not familiar with that. Feature management um, is a new feature starting with 10.03 where we would hide new features behind um, a feature key. Uh, that way every organization has, has time to train their employees and they can decide when they want to uh, roll this out instead of a new feature just showed up and everybody's confused. Um, I'm in a, oh, I'm not even displaying. That's terrible of me. Get the right machine. There we go, sorry. <laughs> um, this is a 10.05 build, so you're getting a little preview of things to come. But um, if I go to all, you'll see that there's an expense reports reimagined that I've already enabled. Uh, so once people get 10.03, they will see this expense reports reimagined as part of their new features, and they can turn it on. Um, there's information over on the right part portion of the screen about it, or you can click on the learn more. And the learn more will open up the help documentation. And in this help documentation, they've even provided a little video. So really good training for um, organizations to learn about the new expense experience. And I don't know why I get a pop-up message here, but I do. Um, okay. So what we've done now that I've enabled it, if I go into expense, um, the new uh, visibility uh, form, has, it's changed a little bit. 
So for you can now choose to recommend fields or do not display on the expense report or even on the expense lines. Um, you can make things optional or, and I'm not really sure what recommended does because it's not required. It uh, must put some other little squiggly in there, but we do have some fields that are, that are recommended. I think, oh, I know what it is. It pu puts it more up front to the employee. I'll show you that when we get into the experience. So there's different settings there. And what we've done is we've created a new expense management workspace with this new experience. This new experience um, used a process called Moneyball. And what Moneyball is, is we, we, uh, we bring in customers and we work with the customers from the beginning of the design all the way up until the time we ship. So we worked with 10 different customers um, pretty deep on this. So we believe we've got an experience that um, will work better for employees. So the workspace now will have um, information about open reports, receipts, any open expenses. So this would be like, oh, I've got my credit card transactions have been imported in and I haven't put them in an expense report. So it's telling me I have work to do. Um, approvals, the receipts is if I had uploaded receipts already, they would, and they weren't attached to anything, they would be showing there. So I'll go ahead um, and create a new expense report. And, um, MBAS conference. And here I have the option to just choose to add all 16 of my expenses that are out there if I wanted to. Or I can say add none. And I'll choose to add none for now. If I had receipts uploaded, I would also have that option to include those in the report. And I'll go ahead and click create. Now I do want to tell you though that there isn't complete 100% parity between the new experience and the old experience. For example, the per diem support is not supported in the new experience yet. That is one of the um, features that they're trying to get in in the next six months. Um, but that, but it, that isn't there. So if you use per diem, you may not be able to use the new experience yet. So if I wanted to create a new manual expense, I would just click new or I can choose unattached expenses and this will show up all of those uh, 16 records that were in my count before. So these are credit card transactions typically um, or you just have expenses out there. So I can just, you know, pick a, pick a couple uh, transactions that I wanna enter into this expense report. And right off the bat, I have one green check mark and one red X. And that's telling the employee that, hey, I got a problem. So over on the right hand side, the big red X says, I can't submit this uh, expense report because something's not done. But right below that, there is a policy. And you can see the policy just by clicking on it. So here it's telling me that a receipt is required for anything that's $25 or greater. So that tells me I need to enter that receipt so that means I need to take action. So those, um, I, one of the things I wanna say before I move on is those fields that I said are recommended, they would be in this area right here. Um, if, you, if you wanted, um, if, they, if they were optional, they'd be hidden onto a second string screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take an action and all the actions that are required by the employee are right here. So I can choose to add a receipt um, and I can add new or select existing. I don't have any up here, so I actually need to browse and take my good old, I have so many hotel ones, I'm sure I can just grab one and it'll be good. <laughs> um, and upload that. Um, and once it's uploaded, it should just take a minute, there we go. I have now attached, and as you can see now, everything looks good. So as an employee, I didn't have to go try to figure out how to, what was wrong with my expense report or click all over, and then I can just choose to submit it in for review. If I wanted to take a look at the receipt, I can come into this page and it'll show up on the right as well. Um, so you'll see all the details there. And they, so that kind of helps them with uh, different things. So I think that was 
the primary things to show about the new experience. The old experience is still here. Um, the expense management workspace is the new experience, but the My Expenses expense reports is the old experience. Or for transactions like per diem, you can go into expenses as a, uh, just as an expense and enter all that information ahead of time so you're not doing it in the new experience. But you could pull them into that new report if you wanted. All right. I went really fast. <laughs> so any uh, questions on the expense experience or if you thought of one for timesheet, that's good. Yeah. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. No. So for mobile, for expenses, we do have an app that shipped back with 7.2 with the mobile expense experience, um, the client. Um, that one's still there and it still works. Uh, at, at some point, I think on the roadmap, is they're going to add receipt capture first to that mobile timesheet app, to the Xamarin app. They're going to add a page for receipt capture. And I think part of what he wants to do there is actually create the expense in the background as well. So think like OCR type uh, functionality. Um, I'm not sure how far they're going to get, but that's what they want to do. And then eventually, I think they'll, they'll want to move the other expense functionality into that mobile. But it, it's time. But we do have a mobile expense solution already. How many of you are using expense already for F&O? Anybody? Or just looking or thinking or don't care? <laughs> How about timesheets? Did the mobile look good? Do you think you'll use that? Yeah. yeah. That went through some of the Moneyball process as well. Um, it was the first project that we used um, for the Moneyball process. All right. Well, thank you. And again, um, if you have questions, you can email me. I didn't put a, I don't have a slide, but I have business cards and, uh, or you can, if you remember, K Nelson, K-N-E-L-S-O-N at Microsoft.com. Thank you.